Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at every single LEGO Ninjago Elemental Master minifigure ever made. The reason I'm making this video now is because, of course, the Ninjago City Markets is coming out very soon, but it was sent to me early by LEGO for review, and that set features an all-new Camille minifigure, who is the final Elemental Master from Ninjago Tournament of Elements that had not been made into physical form yet. So now that we have Camille, all 16 Elemental Masters from that season are made physically, so I thought it'd be fun to make a video reviewing every single one of them. I will, of course, also be covering the Elemental Master minifigures that did not come from that season, and then finally, of course, all the main Ninja and Ninjago are Elemental Masters, but of course they have dozens of different variants across all the years, so if I covered every single variant of every single Ninja, this video would be like six hours long, and I already have other videos on the channel covering every version of every Ninja, so I just picked out one version of each Ninja to cover in this video, and we'll do that at the very end. I want to focus on the non-Ninja Elemental Masters first. So here are the first two non-Ninja Elemental Master minifigures that were released. These were released as a part of the original Tournament of Elements wave back in 2015, so despite there being tons of Elemental Masters in the show, these were the only two aside from Skylar that actually came in sets that wave. At the time, side characters were not something we got all too often in Ninjago, so these two are really exciting because yeah, they have great designs. So here you can see of course we have Karloff the Master of Metal and Griffin Turner the Master of Speed. Karloff looks fantastic, he uses like these big metal glove pieces, and then he's got a samurai helmet on as well as the ZX armor in silver. I love the sort of runic design in his metal armor, that looks great. And then his face print I know has been reused so much for like other themes. I forget if this was introduced for Karloff or if it was just a reused face print from the beginning, but I think it works really well for him. Beards are something we don't see all too often in Ninjago, so it definitely helps this guy stand out. And I also love the bags under his eyes too. Yeah, the figure in my opinion perfectly captures his personality from the show. And black and silver is just a great color combination, very monochrome obviously but for the Master of Metal, in my opinion, that works. Removing his helmet and armor piece, there's a full look at his face print as well as his torso print, and then turning around, there's a look at the back torso print as well, with this, like, very interesting circular symbol on it. You can see a lot of the Elemental Masters have, like, a little symbol to represent their element on the back, so I guess this is the symbol for metal right here. And yeah, I love that. It looks great. So unique. And then, of course, he just has gray hands underneath the gloves. So yeah, in my opinion, great minifigure all around. Obviously, he doesn't have any leg printing, and that would have been nice to see. However, in my opinion, he doesn't need it. It definitely would have helped him, and it would have made him feel a lot more detailed. But for a one-off character like this. I don't know. I don't mind that it's not there. And then Griffin Turner. Man, I love Griffin Turner. He is one of my favorite Ninjago characters of all time. He's hardly appeared in the show at all, but I don't know. He's just got such a fun personality, and I love the element of speed. That's just such a great idea. And I think he has an incredible design, too. So you can see his face frame's just got, like, these red glasses and this super wide smile. Again, just like the beard on Karloff, this is just such a unique color combination. It makes him stand out against all the other Ninjago figures. But I don't know. With the glasses and the smile, it just communicates his personality so well. And again, he was just translated perfectly from the show. Show. Love the slick back hair too, that makes sense. I'm sure he experiences a lot of wind resistance when running, so having his hair in this shape is perfect. I think now is also as good as time as any to plug my all new Speed Builds channel. You may notice the profile picture on that channel looks a little bit similar to what you're seeing here. But yeah, if you want to see Speed Builds and Ninjago sets, I'll put a card in the top right corner. That's unrelated to this video, but I've been meaning to shout it out. Anyway, now back to the minifigure, you can see his torso is like these red and white robes, and red and white is just a fantastic color combination. It's not something that we see all too often in Ninjago. It was on like DigiKai, and then it's on like the new kimono training robes for Ninjago core, but it fits Griffin Turner perfectly. I like how he has the shuriken in his belt too that has like a clock on it, and there you can see there's that time symbol again, and then turning him around there's a look at the back torso print which we kind of looked at earlier, but yeah, the symbol for speed is like an hourglass with these swirls around it, and that red bell continues to run the back too. Now something kind of interesting about this figure is he does have an alternate face, however this alternate face is completely not canon, because yeah, I don't believe he ever took off his glasses in the show. This is weird because in 2015 alternate faces on Ninjago figures were not super common, like the main ninja didn't have alternate faces yet, I think there was only like three or four four figures before this guy to have an alternate phase, but yeah, for some reason, Griffin Turner is one of the ones who got one, even though this face never even appeared in the show. So yeah, I don't know, while this isn't necessarily a Griffin Turner face print to me, it is a good expression to get, could be useful for customs and whatnot, but yeah, I definitely much prefer the face on the front. But yeah, despite being one of the very first Elemental Master minifigures, Griffin Turner might even be my favorite one, so I'm really happy to see we got him so early, and both these two are just perfect. Translated from the show so well, captures their personality, captures their outfits, I couldn't be happier with them. Now we come to Skylar, the Master of Amber, and there has been four total Skylar other variants over the years. The first one was in 2015 as a part of the Tournament of Elements wave, same wave that Griffin Turner and Karloff came in, but then this one over here was a LEGO Store exclusive minifigure set in 2017, and then the next two, which we'll look at in a moment, came out in 2018 and 2022. But yeah, starting with the original Skylar, I think she's good. You can see she's basically just a bright orange ninja, but she uses like this brown as her secondary color, which all the ninja did use that wave, but I don't know, I feel like it works with the bright orange here. I also like the bright yellow printing on top of it with like the belt and the undershirt. That looks quite cool. And you can see she's got a symbol on the top of her hood too, that was used specifically for her. Her weapon of choice was a crossbow, so as such she also has a quiver around her back. And then removing that piece, you can see there's a look at the back torso print, where you can see there's actually a printed quiver, however it's kind of broken off and falling apart. And then looking at her again from the front, there's a slightly better look at that torso print. Yeah, she's solid in my opinion. Obviously Orange Ninja was very different 
for the time we thought she was going to be a new part of the team and then she just wasn't. But it was cool to see them mix up the color scheme so much. And then Skylar's another one of the minifigures to have a double-sided face. Here's what the front face print looks like. You can see she's got like these giant eyebrows and then a pretty happy smile. And then turning her around, there's her alternate face, which just like Griffin Turner's alternate face, this is completely non-canon. But yeah, she just has like this orange mask printed over her face and she's screaming. And that looks cool, don't get me wrong. Like it looks like she's a wrestler or something. But yeah, a bit odd that this wave had two non-canon alternate faces. When again, as I mentioned, the main ninja of this wave still didn't. I do actually quite like how that looks under the hood though. And then this version of Skylar came out in 2017, however, the figure's based off her appearance from Ninjago Skybound in 2016. And you can see this is the first Skylar suit to use dark red as her secondary color, and in my opinion, that just improves the design so much. It really just breaks up the bright orange for me, and it looks great, the two colors just mesh together so well. You can see that symbol from her hood's now on her torso, and she's got this really nice leg print with like these metallic daggers on it. I like how the belt looks hanging down too. And then obviously she's ditched the ninja hood here, and now she just has a classic Lego hood piece in this dark red color. I like that because it's clear Skylar was not meant to be a ninja at this point, so this makes her more of her own character. She's not matching the ninja suits, rather she's just got her own outfit for herself. Still though, she has the quiver around the back, and then if I remove the hood piece, there's a better look at the torso as well as the face print. I like the red undershirt and the torso pops a lot more than the bright yellow, and the face print I think is slightly worse this time around. I don't know, it's cool to get an alternate option, but the two are very similar. The 2017 Skylar just has like bigger eyes, which in my opinion just aren't as good. Turning her around, unfortunately no alternate face this time, would have liked to get a new expression for her, but then if we also remove the quiver piece, there's a look at the back torso print, where you can see there's just like this brown printing to show where the quiver's meant to go. This figure was also the first time Skylar's hairpiece was introduced, she came with an alternate hairpiece in the minifigure set that she came in, and yeah, you can see she uses just like a classic Lego red ponytail, that's a very cool color for her, and I think it fits her so well. So yeah, while I feel the face prints may be a little weaker than the original, and I wish she had an alternate face, overall I think this suit's definitely an improvement over the original, the color combination is just fantastic. And then here are the final two Skylar minifigures, we have her appearance from Ninjago Hunted back in 2018, as well as this minifigure that came in the Ninjago Crystallized sets, however this version of Skylar never actually appeared in the show, the show just reused Hunted Skylar again. So yeah, this figure is completely non-canon. But anyway, let's start with Hunted Skylar right here, I really like this new version. You can see she actually introduces a third color right here, on top of the bright orange and the dark red she now also uses gunmetal grey, and I think that's awesome, obviously it fits with the vibes of Hunted, right? Because in Hunted all the elemental masters are sneaking around in the shadows, so their armor is like very thrown together and you can see like her armor is very scuffed up, but yeah, I love how the metallic printing looks and just fits her so well. The gunmetal grey arms are a fun touch too, as well as on the armor piece, and then I love the use of the Lego Batman movie belt piece. Makes the figure a little more three-dimensional and just fits her so well. The only part I don't like about this figure is the leg print because obviously there is none. The previous two versions of Skylar did have a leg print, so I don't know why it's not here. You probably could reuse the leg print from the Skylar and it would look good, but yeah, a little annoying that that's not there by default. However, the best part about this figure, in my opinion, is the face print, because while it is once again just another smile, I don't know, it just looks so much better than the previous ones. It's toned down a bit, right? The other two were very big and exaggerated, but this one just feels more realistic, and I feel like this better captures Skylar's personality in the show. So yeah, I actually think this is a quite good one. If we remove her hairpiece, you can see this time around she does actually have an alternate face, and this alternate face is really good. Again, it kind of feels straight out of the show, but yeah, it's an angry expression for her, which we really hadn't gotten before. Like, we did get it on that mask face, but obviously that mask face doesn't always work, so this is just a regular Skylar, angry, and it just opens up so many more options for displaying this minifigure. Then there's a look at the back torso print with the armor and belt removed. You can see there's more of that metallic armoring on the back, and there's one more look at the front torso print with the belt removed. And then the final version of Skylar, crystallized Skylar, I don't know. I think I like this figure initially, but as time's gone on, and especially comparing it to the previous versions, it feels a little bit lackluster, because while it does have a few cool elements, I don't know, it feels like it's missing something too. She's of course still got the dark red and the bright orange, but the gunmetal gray is mostly gone here, it's like a little bit on her torso, but it's not super obvious. Instead, it's been replaced by gold, and in my opinion, gold just doesn't really work on her. I know gold was a huge element of Ninjago Crystallized, so that's probably why it's there, but yeah, this didn't even appear in the show, so. Kinda wish she'd stuck with the gunmetal gray color scheme. She's got like the Resistance logo from Crystallized right there, and then just unprinted legs again, which that's very disappointing, especially because she doesn't get the belt this time around, because the unprinted legs work a little bit better for me with the belt, because then there's a good break between the torso and the legs, but yeah, on this figure it just abruptly cuts off, so it just makes it feel a little bit lower quality. And then the face print I like, but something about it still seems off to me. The expressions just don't feel right for Skylar, like I don't know, this angry face to me just isn't her. I do like the white face markings on the cheeks though, again those are non-canon, those never appeared in the show, but they do look quite cool, definitely fit with the whole like resistance vibe, but I wish the shape of her angry face looked more like this one, because this is how she looks in the show, I don't know if she's ever made that face. And the same thing with the happy face too, like the new happy face, it's alright, but comparing it to the previous one, this one looks like Skylar so much more. I don't know who this is, this is some other woman with red eyebrows, because yeah, there is a significant difference there. Turning around to the back, you can see there's a look at the back torso print with the armor removed. The armor was of course just the ZX armor in gold. And yeah, I mean everything looks fine back here, I don't dislike this figure, but I think it's the weakest of all the Skylars, which is 
is disappointing because it's also the newest one. In my opinion, the Hunted Skylar is definitely the peak for me. Skybound Skylar is also pretty great because she has that leg printing, but I don't know, the belt as well as the face print really tie everything together on Hunted Skylar for me. So yeah, it's definitely cool to say that Skylar's gotten so many different variants over the years, and I like how unique each of them is, even if not every single one is my favorite. Next, we have two very interesting minifigures, Tox and Pale Man. And the reason these two are interesting is because they were also released in early 2015, the same time as Griffin Turner, Karloff, and Skylar. The difference is they weren't a part of the Tournament of Elements wave. In fact, they weren't a part of Ninjago wave at all. These two figures come from a different theme, Lego Ultra Agents. Ultra Agents was a theme about secret agents tracking down bad guys, and all the bad guys have like these really unique designs. But yeah, these were two of the bad guy designs in those sets. While this character is just called Tox in Ninjago, her name in Ultra Agents was Toxikita. And while this character is called Pale Man in Ninjago, his name in Ultra Agents was Invisible. So I assume these two were designed for Ultra Agents, and the Ninjago team looked at them and went, hey, those are pretty cool, can we use them for our show? And then they kind of just put them in the background of Tournament of Elements. But as such, we were also able to get them as physical minifigures. So yeah, that just makes them extra cool to me, the fact that these aren't Ninjago figures, but are still two of the Elemental Masters. And I have to say, I love both of their designs. Toxikita uses like the Cavewoman slash Pixel hairpiece, but in this bright green color. Super unique, but I love how it looks. She also has like lime green eyes, these bright green lips, and like these toxic bubbles erupting around her skin, which is super creepy. Then she's got like a necklace, a crop top on, and her skin printing is all like sickly and green. And I like the leg print too, with, like these gray pants. She's got little vials of poison on them. Her outfit definitely makes her element very clear. I just love how she looks all around. Turning her around, taking a look at her back torso print, you can see, yeah, there's just that cutoff cropped up again, and more of that yellow greenish skin. And then removing her hairpiece so you could take a look at her alternate face, there's how that looks, and this is not canon to Ninjago at all. This was only ever really used in Ultra Agents. Because I think in the context of Ultra Agents, this is her like using her toxic powers, and this is how she looks normally. However, they decide that in Ninjago, this is just her appearance all the time. So I guess you could consider this a non canon alternate face, similar to like Griffin Turner. But yeah, I love this minifigure. I love how she's two different characters and two different themes, and I think she works perfectly for both of them. And then Pale Man is awesome. This is just such a silly figure. He's just in like this solid dark red suit, and you can see his undershirt underneath is printed with a bunch of pictures of money on it. He's got this big gold chain, these golden sunglasses in this hat, and then just a trans clear headpiece. In the show, his glasses are just floating in the air, and I think they translated that perfectly here. His design's just really eccentric in the best way possible, and here's a look at his full face print with that hat removed. So yeah, you can see it's just trans clear. You can actually see his neck piece underneath. Such a fun design. These two are both awesome. Now, we actually didn't get any more of the Tournament of Elements Elemental Masters until 2017, two years later, where we got a LEGO Store exclusive minifigure set that came with both Ash and Shade. This was the same minifigure set that the Skybound version of Skylar came in, and I remember at the time, this was super exciting, because after Tournament of Elements ended, we just thought we were never going to get any of the other minifigures, but when this set came out, it was like, oh, okay, LEGO is going to actually try to give us these guys, and both these figures are honestly really good. Starting with Ash, the Master of Smoke, I absolutely love his design. My favorite thing about him is the fact that he uses sand blue for his torso, legs, and hair piece. Because in the show, like, yeah, it might have been sand blue, but the color was a little bit ambiguous, so they very easily could have gone with just, like, dark gray for those pieces. But no, they chose sand blue instead, and that just pops so much more and gives him such a unique look. Instead of just being another monochrome figure just like Shade, the sand blue makes this guy feel very unique, especially with that hair piece. I don't think that hair piece was ever really used in that color anywhere else. It's just such a unique color scheme. I love the design of his torso and legs, too. He's got sort of, like, this medieval-ish armor. And you can see he's got, like, a belt on the bottom of his torso, and that's got the symbol for smoke on it. And then if we turn him around to the back, you can see that belt continues around the back, as well as, like, the chest armor laces up back there. The face print on this guy is really good, too. Very, like, intense expression. In fact, there's a screenshot from the show where he looks exactly like this. I'm pretty sure this brush is copied from one specific screenshot. But yeah, obviously, being accurate to the show is important, and they did a perfect job with this guy. Something kind of interesting is this set also came with an alternate ninja mask for Shade. It's just, like, the classic Lego ninja mask piece, except in gray this time around. And while this isn't accurate to the show at all, Ash never wore this in the show, it is still cool to see, because we still got his hair piece. So this is just a fun alternate option to have. Because, yeah, I believe this piece came in the original ninja theme, like, years and years ago, and then it was reintroduced in this color back in 2016. But this was just a much cheaper way to get this piece in gray. So, yeah, well, I think it works fine on Ash. I definitely prefer to display him with his hair piece, but I like that you do have those two options there. Unfortunately, all the minifigures in the set did not have an alternate face, so there's no other options for Ash. However, I think the one face print we do have is more than good enough. And then here's Shade, the Master of Shadow, and you can see his color scheme is completely grayscale, however, that works perfectly for him. I believe he's the first of one of very few Ninjago minifigures to have dual molded legs. I can't actually think of any others off the top of my head. I think the Ninjago City Gardens version of the mechanic also has these same dual molded legs. But yeah, dual molding is something that happens very infrequently with Ninjago. So despite not having any actual leg printing, the dual molding allows this guy's legs to still feel detailed. But the coolest part about him is for sure that torso piece. You can see he's got like this really elaborate armor on, and it almost feels like the kind of armor like a secret agent would wear. It's like designed to fit his muscles around his chest, and then turning them around, you can see that's just like a giant vest that's strapped to his back. He also has this wolf logo in the center, which I assume is meant to be the symbol for Shadow, and that is the one bit of color in this entire minifigure because the wolf has little red eyes, and I think that's absolutely perfect. 
perfect. Then the face print is of course printed on gray, but I love the design too. Very interesting expression. His mouth's open, but he's just kind of annoyed. I think it fits the character's personality from the show perfectly. And then of course he's got the big bushy eyebrows and the circles under his eyes. Yeah, I really love this guy too. Both of these feel like they're pulled straight from Tournament of Elements and they both have very fun designs. My favorite thing is definitely how they use the sand blue for Ash. That's so much more interesting than gray. And also helps keep these two figures quite distinct from each other. So yeah, overall another two really great ones. Also in 2017, we had a Toys R Us Bricktober pack, which if you don't know what Bricktober is, it was the thing that Toys R Us used to do back in the day. And every week of October, they release a different exclusive minifigure set. Each week would be for a different theme. But in 2017, and then again in 2018, we got Ninjago themed Bricktober packs, which came with four exclusive Ninjago minifigures. And in the first Bricktober pack, we got this guy right here, Nero, which was super exciting because in my opinion, Nero was probably one of the most important elemental masters in Tournament of Elements. Aside from maybe Karloff, and then of course Skylar, he was definitely the non-ninja character who got the most focus. So honestly, as much as I love Griffin Turner, we probably should have gotten this guy in 2015 instead of Griffin Turner, but it was so nice to see he was finally made in a minifigure form. And yeah, I think he looks quite good. He's got plain unprinted legs, which while they do work, and they are accurate to the show, I don't know, do feel a little bit lame on him. Would have been cool if they designed new legs for him here, but it's not a huge deal. His torso is just these tan robes with metallic silver printing on them. They're kind of somewhat like Jedi-ish, and then he's also got this really elaborate belt as well as necklace. And then super cool design for his face where he's got like his goatee and he's sort of like squinting a bit. I could definitely imagine him using his powers with this expression. Unfortunately, he also does not have an alternate face just like the previous two we looked at. An alternate face definitely would have been useful for him because I feel like this isn't the best all the time expression. And then his hairpiece is really interesting too because it was not a new hairpiece. However, it has an exclusive print on it because yeah, this hairpiece is just entirely white. That's just a black streak printed on. And that was kind of done out of necessity because the hairpiece that he had in the show actually didn't exist in physical Lego form. Because the hairpiece they gave him was based off the Lego elf ear piece. So while the hairpiece existed, it always had these big elf ears coming out the sides. And obviously Nero's not an elf. So they switched it to this one, which is definitely a lot flatter. However, I think it was the best alternative considering that piece didn't exist. So yeah, well, this is probably our first elemental master that's not 100% accurate to the show. He's pretty darn close. And because he was such an important character, I'm glad he was one of the first ones we got, even if it did take them two years. And then after 2017, for another four years, we didn't get any more elemental masters. At that time, I kind of thought they were just going to be done. They were like, okay, Nero was the important one. We got him done. It's just the kind of niche ones left. So they're probably just never going to come in sets. But then in 2021 with Ninjago Legacy, they released the the Legacy Tournament of Elements set, and that came with a total of three Elemental Masters. The first two you can see right here. We have Gravis, the Master of Gravity, and Jacob, the Master of Sound. Now something else kind of weird happened with these figures in that these figures also just aren't accurate to the show like the previous versions were. Aside from Nero's hairpiece, every previous Elemental Master was pretty much one-to-one -one from the show, and the only reason Nero wasn't was because that hairpiece just didn't exist. However, in 2021, the legacy versions of these characters don't match their show versions exactly. Some are closer than others, but yeah, they just didn't pull the prints from the show again. I'm pretty sure the reason why this is, is because the Elemental Masters that weren't originally made into toys, they were designed by Will Film, the animation company who does Ninjago. And in 2017, LEGO was still working with Will Film, so they could just ask Wolfham for the rights to make the figures and make some deal there. But when we get to 2021, LEGO was no longer working with Whale Film, but LEGO couldn't print the characters that Wolfham designed because they don't have the rights to them. So instead, they redesigned the characters a little bit to be similar to their appearance in the show, but not exactly. And that led to mixed results. Starting with Gravis, I think he's my favorite of the redesigned Elemental Masters because he's pretty darn close to the original. I'll put a picture of the original on screen just so you have a comparison. But yeah, you can see the major differences are the symbol on the bottom of his torso is completely different. The new symbol for Gravity is like the swirling orb. When it used to be like this big gear. But you can see everything else besides that's translated over pretty one-to-one. -one. He also doesn't have a symbol on his turban anymore. However, I don't even know how they would print that. But yeah, no, everything else is pretty darn close. You got like this metallic armor, this orange cloth crossing down. They added like this little strap coming down from his head. Not sure exactly what that is, but definitely adds just more dimension to the torso. And then the other thing is they removed his leg printing, which is a little disappointing to see. However, this was a wide release set. So them removing that probably allowed them to add one more elemental master into the set. So I think that's a fair enough trade-off. Face print is pretty much straight out of the show too. He's got like his big mustache and beard and everything, and I think that looks great. His expressions may be a little bit wonky, kind of would have preferred a more neutral expression for him. However, he does have an alternate face, and in my opinion, that's so much better. Where you can see he's just using his powers, his eyes are closed, and actually looks like his mustache is raising up into the air, because of course he's the master of gravity, so I guess the gravity is compelling his mustache to do that. Turning him around, you can see there's a very similar design for everything around the back. So yeah, while not 100% accurate to the show, I think this is more than a fine change. I think he looks fantastic. And then Jacob has a little more change to him. Again, I'll put a picture on screen right 
right here on top of Gravis. So you can see it's still got its afro, and its torso piece and everything still all the same color. However, pretty much everything else is redesigned. His original design had like round glasses with little stars on them, but now we get star-shaped glasses instead, which I suppose is a fine change. The round glasses were cool, but this works. However, the one that bothers me a little bit more is they just completely changed his facial hair. I don't know, the big mustache in the old one was iconic. Would've liked to still get it here, because yeah, this just makes him look less like the character in the show. And then his outfit is pretty different, however, it still fits him in my opinion. He's kind of dressed like a music conductor, which is very fun. They added these gold pauldrons on too, which is a great change. And I love like all the fluffy cloth coming from his neck area. Turning around, taking a look at his back torso print. Again, it's like this gold trim teal jacket. Looks fantastic. So yeah, while this guy's a lot less accurate to the show, it's still clear who he's supposed to be. Maybe this is immediately recognizable as Jacob. The only major change I'd make is that facial hair. I really wish that was accurate, but I don't mind all the other changes. Taking his hair piece off, there's a look at his full face print. You can see he's got these big eyebrows. And you can see he also has an alternate face where he's a bit angry. And that's another great option to have and also captures his personality well. So yeah, I think these two are both fantastic minifigures, fantastic translations of these characters. Gravis is basically perfect in my eyes. And Jacob, while they did a lot of changes, I think they're mostly positive ones. I just wish that facial hair was different. And then we come to Bilobo, who was the other minifigure released as a part of Ninjago Legacy in 2021. And you could say I left some blank space next to him and that's so I could put up a picture of how he looked in the show. Because this is, in my opinion, the worst Elemental Master minifigure. This looks nothing like Bilobo in the show. Literally, the hair piece is the only thing that's there. Bilobo in the show was not shirtless. Bilobo in the show had shorts on. And also, one of his most iconic features was these big bushy eyebrows. And while the other two Elemental Masters in the set did get new face prints, Bilobo is over here stuck looking like this. That piece is from Lego Hidden Side, which I guess some of the viewers might not even know what that is at this point, but that was a Lego original theme in like 2019 and 2020, I want to say it was. And yeah, the main character of that show was a kid, a child, and that was his face print, and they just reused it for Bilobo here. That looks nothing like the character in the show. They couldn't even find a face print to reuse that had the big eyebrows. So yeah, that's really disappointing to see. There's like the alternate face too where he's quite angry, but yeah, by opinion, that still doesn't look like him. But now taking a look at the rest of the redesigned torso, I mean, it is a good design, don't get me wrong, it's just not the character. He's got like this feather necklace, which that did come from his original design, that's nice to see. And he's got like all these green swirl tattoos on him. There's like little plants growing out of this pouch on his back. And the light print's quite good too. It's just sand green with a little belt on it, you could probably use that for like a custom Lloyd or something if you wanted to. So yeah, while the torso and legs are obviously very, very different from the show, I could probably still excuse them if he had a good face print. But yeah, the face print's definitely the most disappointing part of this figure. That's the kind of piece that, in my opinion, you need to customize, because the base form just looks terrible. So yeah, it's a shame this guy's so inaccurate to the show, but in all honesty, out of all the Elemental Masters, the fact that only one is this bad, that's a pretty good record, all things considered. And now, finally, to round things off for the Tournament of Elements Elemental Masters, here is Camille, the Master of Form, who's being released this year in 2023 as a part of the new Ninjago City Market set. As I mentioned, I was sent that set early for review by LEGO, so go check out my review of that set after this video if you're interested. But yeah, she was the final Elemental Master we needed from Tournament of Elements, and I'm so glad we finally have her. I'll put a picture of her original design over here, and you can see, just like the Legacy Elemental Master, she was redesigned. However, hers is still pretty close, and I think it's mostly improvements. So you can see they've removed, like, the red from her design and replaced it with pink. That, in my opinion, is a bit of a downgrade. I definitely liked the red on her. However, this definitely isn't awful. They also added a few little sparkles to her design, which are very cute, and they also covered her up a bit more at the top of her torso. The leg print's a lot more detailed in this version. Now she's got, like, a bell, and these little lines coming down that started her torso. I think that looks great. And then, of course, her hair piece was 100% accurate with this big, bushy purple hair. I love how that part looks. Super cool to see it here. The biggest inaccuracy in my opinion is the face print. Just because her face in the show had two pretty defining features, she had a mole on her face, and then she also had red lips, and this face print, as you can see, has neither of those things. However, luckily, there is another face print that exists that's very easy to replace. This face has come in quite a few sets over the years, and if you put her hair back on on top of it, that feels a lot more like the Camille we know from the show. There's a look at how she looks with the alternate face, too. Yeah, that's pretty perfect in my opinion. So yeah, it's a shame that's not the face she came with from the outset, but all the other important parts are here, so I don't mind too much. And then turning around, taking a look at her back torso print, you can see the face she comes with has no alternate face, but that back torso print has more of those silver sparkles on it, and those look gorgeous, just really adds so much to her design. Camille was one of my favorite Elemental Masters in tournament back in 2015, so it's so exciting eight years later to finally have a minifigure of her, and to finally say we have all the Elemental Masters from Tournament of Elements. It is so surreal that that is finally a reality. Anyway, I can't really go on in this video without mentioning the ninja minifigures in Tournament of Elements, because of course, yeah, our main five ninja are all Elemental Masters, and they were all competitors in the tournament, I guess except for Zane. But yeah, of course, here's Kai the Master of Fire and Jay the Master of Lightning in their Tournament of Elements outfits. I've covered these guys before, so I won't spend too long on them, but I just love the tournament suits overall. I think the yellow arms just mesh so well with their colors. Jay especially, this is one of my favorite minifigures ever. It's really cool that they have, like, their chest showing too. Just perfect use of the half-mass pieces. And I like how they have their original symbols around the back too.
Then here's Cole, the Master of Earth, as well as Lloyd, the Master of Energy, again in these same outfits. Cole, I like the dark blue for detailing on his torso. And Lloyd, I don't know how I feel about that color of green for his belt, but still though, as a collection, I think they all look great. And there's a look at their symbols from the back. And then finally for our Elemental Master Ninja minifigures, here is of course Titanium Zane, the Master of Ice. And this is one of my favorite minifigures. This version of Zane was just so cool the first time I got it. All the silver just looks so great. A little surprising that the torso and legs are just light gray and not silver as well. That might have just been budget constraints. Silver might have looked cooler, but I don't know. I think the perfect amount of silver is used here, and it all works quite well. I like how he has his virtual symbol on his torso too. The metallic silver printing for his chest works great as well. So yeah, all around very fun minifigure. But now that we've finished with the Elemental Masters from Tournament of Elements, there's of course a few Elemental Masters who are not featured in Tournament of Elements. So here are the first two that are introduced after the fact, both in 2015. We have Moro, the Master of Wind, and then of course Nia, the Master of Water. I don't think I've actually covered the Moro minifigure before on the channel, but yeah, he's got an awesome design. All the Ghost minifigures look super cool, but I really love the design choices they did for Moro. For one, his torso piece is designed to look like the original 2011 robes. That's cool in two ways, because one, it's just a reference to how he used to be Wu's student, but then it also ties into the whole concept of him wanting to be the green ninja, because you can see his symbol right here is like a variation on Lloyd's symbol. It's like this dragon face with like these glowing green eyes. The translime green legs look great too, I had to do the whole spectral feel, and they just pop so much, especially when I have them in my light box like this. Same thing with the face print too. Expression's great, like definitely feels like he does in the show, but man, on that transparent head, it's extra cool. Turning him around, you can see there's of course no alternate face because it would show through the front, and then he also has this cape piece back here. Once you flip it up, you can see he's got like this really elaborate symbol right there. I assume that's the symbol for wind, or maybe the symbol for ghosts. But yeah, that's massive. Definitely super cool design. They were definitely going for like ghost and ninja here. Maybe would have liked a few more wind elements, something to indicate that, hey, this is the master of wind, because I don't really get that from this figure. However, I don't know. He's still super cool despite that. And then Nia, just like the other ninja I won't go in super depth about, just because I've covered her in her own video on this channel. But this was her first ever suit when she became the water ninja. And I really like the overall design. The azure and the dark red really combined the samurai axe Nia with the new water Nia. And you can see she's got like her original symbol in the center right there, though now the fiery phoenix is more water like. The gold also just ties everything together so nicely. Just such a unique color combination all around. I really love this minifigure. Possession had some great figures overall, and these two are some prime examples. Then, of course, in 2017, we got the two Masters of Time, Acronix and Crux. And these two have very similar designs, yet they're still quite different, but they're some of the most detailed Ninjago figures we've ever seen, and also, for some reason, are some of the most valuable Ninjago figures we've ever seen, both going for, like, $45 each on the aftermarket. But I really like these two. I love how they mirror each other. Like, they have one gunmetal gray arm and one red arm, but the sides of those are on our opposite. Additionally, because, of course, Acronix traveled to the future, but Crux stayed in the main timeline. You can see Crux's suit is designed to look a lot more worn down. He uses like dark red instead of normal red, and all of his like silver armor is a lot more rusted. There's also like some paint chipping on this giant gear in the center. They also have a few different accessories going on. Acronix has like an MP3 player with headphones hanging down, while Crux has an hourglass on a chain. And then they both have these really elaborate hood pieces with little clock designs on them with gears and everything. It's the same between the two of them, but it looks great. Then they have these little green capes around the back, which is super cool. And then you can see the back torso prints are quite similar. However, there are slight differences, such as there being like little scuffs and dent marks on Crux's armor because, again, it's older, while Acronix's just looks more new. And then, of course, if you remove their hoods, we can see their face prints underneath, where Acronix is, like, smiling, and he's got this little device in his ear, and then Crux is very angry. I love the green eye makeup around their eyes, though. That's super cool. And then turning the two of them around, you can see Acronix, unfortunately, does not have an alternate face, but luckily Crux does, and you can see that's him in his Dr. Saunders disguise. And then those aren't actually our only Time Twins minifigures, because one of the exclusive minifigures in the Bricktober packs was actually Young Crux. So this was Crux before going through the Time Vortex to match with the Young Acronix figure, which we just looked at. And this is a really cool concept, however, it wasn't executed perfectly in my opinion, because they definitely missed a few things here. So here's a look at Young Crux versus Old Crux, and you can see, yeah, like on Young Crux, the suit's all new. He's got the red instead of the dark red, a lot of those like scuff and scratch marks are missing, the clock in the center is not rusty. However, it kind of feels like they just forgot what the plan was with the legs. Like, for example, they removed his hourglass from his torso, right? That's not present on Young Crux, but then it's still present on the belt printing, because yeah, there's the bottom of the hourglass and the belt printing right there, but then on Young Crux, that's still there, even though he doesn't have the top of the hourglass. So like, what's going on with that? What's the deal there? Though they did still remove the hourglass chain from the legs, but there's actually still some scuff marks on the legs. So yeah, overall it's done alright, but it could have been done better. The other thing is they kept the bronze trim around the armor, which as we just saw, Acronix doesn't use on the legs. So it would have been cool to get rid of that here too, to show that, oh hey, the armor hasn't rusted yet. But yeah, they just kept that between the two of them. And then back towards the print, they replaced the dark red with normal red, and got rid of all the scuff marks, but there's the chain to the hourglass again, which doesn't continue around the front. So yeah, it doesn't feel like as much effort was put in this figure as could have been. It's a fun idea, but I don't know, it was not executed perfectly. And then he does have an all-new face print for this figure, where you can see it's just a younger version of Crux. He's got red eyebrows instead of gray, as well as a black mustache. And then turning him around, no alternate face, unfortunately. So yeah, fun idea and definitely a cool variant to have, but unfortunately, he's just not executed perfectly, in my opinion. But then also in 2017, with Hands of Time, we got these two minifigures, Ray and Maya, 
These are, of course, Kai and Nia's parents, and while they aren't currently Elemental Masters in the show, they are previous Elemental Masters, so I thought I should still include them in this video. And these minifigures are fairly solid all around. I really love the face print, alright, it's just a great expression, fits him perfectly. But his torso and legs are super cool, because he's got, like, this blacksmith apron on, with, like, this big golden dragon face in the center. That looks great and just fits what we know about the character so perfectly. He's got, like, the sleepy head hairpiece in black, and then turning him around, you can see the apron just wraps around the back. But yeah, this just communicates what he's meant to be so clearly. He's a blacksmith, but he's also the master of fire. It's done really well. He does also have an alternate face around the back, and here you can see he's got a headband on, he's kind of, like, scared and confused. This has always been a weird face print to me, but I know at one point during Hands of Time he gets injured, so I guess that's what this is meant to be. Still, though, that's a very intense expression for him. Probably not my favorite. However, this expression is so good that I don't mind. And then Maya's a bit of a mixed bag, because the biggest flaw with her is definitely just that face print. It doesn't really look how she looks in the show, and to me, that expression's just a little bit strange. But yeah, because she's got this really long black hair, which is definitely a very nice part to get. And then she has these quite elegant blue robes, and almost like samurai armor, kind of similar to Nia. Yeah, this is neat. It actually sort of calls back to Nia's like original kimono design with like the uh, leg print there. And this is a shade of blue that's not used all too often in Jago. Like Nia doesn't use it, Jay doesn't use it, Zane doesn't use it. So it helps Maya stand as her own character. The metallic gold printing looks nice too. I like how the trim on the dress runs all the way down. And then finally taking a look at her from the back. Everything looks good back here too. Alternate face is just kind of a generic scared face. I guess I didn't mention, but yeah, this face print is reused from Lego City, unlike Rey. That headpiece was not designed for her. So yeah, I wish she had gotten a new face print, but all things considered, these two figures are both pretty good, and they're very fun ones to get. Then for the next two figures, I have Sensei Wu and Lord Garmadon right here, and the term Elemental Master for these guys has always been a little bit loose. Like, yeah, they do technically have an elemental power, but Wu is special, we don't see him use it all too often, and Garmadon, we really didn't see him use his elemental power until Season 8, hence why that's the version of him I'm using for this video. The idea is that Wu is the Master of Creation, and Garmadon is the Master of Destruction. I chose the Possession version of Wu because that was like the one and only time we saw Wu use his powers when he summoned his dragon in Possession. And just like the ninja, I won't spend too long on these guys because I've already covered them in their own videos, or I guess not Garmadon yet, but I've covered Garmadon plenty of times on the channel. I like this version of Wu, the Golden Gray is a nice way to mix things up. Definitely feels like very battle ready, so that fits like this being the version of Wu to use his powers. And then Resurrected Garmadon's quite cool. I wish he had a purple belt to tie in with everything else because his powers are purple, his blood on his upper torso piece is purple, but the belt's blue because that's what it was in the movie and they were just reusing parts. However, that's a very easy customization to make if you wanted to, just with the parts from Ninjago Legacy or from the original 2012 sets. I do appreciate that he does have back printing, that's nice to see. And there's a look at the full torso piece with the upper piece removed. But yeah, these are basically just bonus figures to include in this video. And then the final two minifigures for this video are two characters from the all-new Ninjago Dragons Rising Wave. And as of the time I'm recording this video, the Ninjago Dragons Rising show has not aired yet, so I don't know for sure if these are Elemental Masters. However, from what we've seen in the trailers, these two definitely have some sort of power, so I don't know if they're going to be called Elemental Masters in the show, but I don't want this video to become outdated like literally two days after I record it, so I thought it was best just to include them at the end of the video just in case, because yeah, I think they're going to be Elemental Masters, but I'm not sure yet. Anyway, yeah, we have Sora, the master of something. She can like transform her mech with her powers. I don't know how that works. And then Wildfire, who looks to have some sort of fire or lava powers, very similarly to Kai. Sora, though, is an amazing minifigure. You can see she uses this all new armor piece that all the ninja had this wave. However, she's got a very unique hood piece with like these little cat ears coming off the top of it, as well as a bit of her hair peeking down. She's one of very few Ninjago figures to have arm printing, which is so nice to see, and I think that looks great. It feels very robotic and it's got like this orange energy running through it. And then you can see the entire character is just very cat themed. She's got like a little cat keychain right there, and of course the cat ears on the top, and then she's also gonna have it on a back torso print, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But then she's also meant to be like a street racer. So this belt that she has on is actually like a seat belt, which I actually think is very funny, but a lot of fun. And I love the color scheme too, which is like the dark blue, the coral, and the sand blue, all ties together so nicely. You can see her face prints, her actually using her powers with those glowing pink eyes. And then turning around, there's a look at her back torso print with that cat face, as well as her alternate face where she's angry, but she's not using her powers. Definitely one of the coolest new Ninjago minifigures in my opinion. And then Wildfire is a really interesting new character. I love how different this figure is from Kai, because obviously Kai's gotten so many minifigures over the years, so he's used every combination of red and dark red. So they mixed things up with Wildfire, they didn't just give her a red and dark red suit, rather she's got like these sand green robes, and those look fantastic on her. She's also got like this tattered orange cloth around her waist, as well as a bit of tan armor down there it looks like. I love how this dark red trim looks too, with like the fiery design on it. And then her hairpiece is super unique, so this is actually reused from Lego Monkey Kid, from the character Changa, and Changa is a character who's moon themed and bunny themed, and you can see both those are still present in this hairpiece, there's like this bunny hair clip around the back, as well as this giant crescent moon. I doubt Wildfire is gonna have to do with either of those things, but who knows, maybe they'll surprise me. Still though, the moon works, it's just a hair clip, and the actual hair does look really nice. I love just the shaping doll of it. And then her face print, you can see she's got like these big bushy red eyebrows, and she's quite angry, and she's got a little scuff mark on her face. However, unfortunately, she does not have an alternate face, which would have been nice just to have a neutral version of her, so that's definitely a little disappointing to see. Hopefully, she becomes a recurring character in the show, that's something we'll see in the future. But yeah, if they're introducing more Elemental Masters for Dragons Rising, I'm sure this will be a video I have to update in the future, but as for now, 
now, these are two very cool new introductions. And there you go, there is every single LEGO Ninjago Elemental Master minifigure, at least from 2011 to 2023. In terms of my favorites, I like a lot of them because they are just so different, but if I had to pick, I'd say Griffin Turner, Camille, Gravis probably, and then also maybe Ash, but so many of them have great designs, it's so hard to pick. Least favorite to no one's surprise would definitely be Belobo, because while I like the character of the show, this figure just looks nothing like him. The hairpiece is literally the only thing that's accurate to the show, so yeah, I wish he was done significantly better. However, I'm just happy that we have a version of every single Elemental Master now. Let me know in the comments, out of all the minifigures I featured in this video, which one's your favorite and which one's your least favorite? I'm very curious to hear your takes. But as for this video, I think that's about all I have to say, so thanks for watching everybody, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!